Hello and welcome back to another episode of Divinity Original Sins 2, the definitive edition. My name is Saiken, we're playing on Honor Mode Plus difficulty, highest difficulty, only one save, and the enemies are being scaled up to our level, plus two additional levels. It's time to finish Act number 1. This is the last battle, and probably the last part of the series. Um, I mentioned it in the last episode, but I'll re-mention it again. If you enjoy the content of Divinity Original Sins 2, this is the perfect opportunity to say so in the comments and either suggest that we're continuing this playthrough or suggest another challenge other than uh, the an Honor Mode Plus challenge that we have done so far. I definitely enjoyed uh, running it so far and let me talk you through the final, probably the final combat of uh, this episode. So, oftentimes, if you're seeing um, a high, a Bishop Alexander's approach, many people will uh, start to approach him from here, simply because you can abuse line of sight and uh, kind of take the fight up to here. And that's all fine and dandy uh, by the point that you're reaching this on normal honor mode. Look at that, this is kind of level 8 enemies. You can easily be level 9, if not level 10, once you, uh, once you reach the, uh, these parts here of uh, the uh, game. Probably not level 10, but I managed to be level 9, uh, which means all of them are not even your level. Even Bishop Alexander is not up to your standards. However, us being level 11 now means we're fighting a lot of level 13 enemies, so Forget about the 500 hit points that Bishop Alexander has. He's probably going to have 2,000. And there's one enemy in particular that I'm afraid about. And that is uh, the worm. If the worm shows up, this area here might be too small. The worm has the tendency to deal physical, uh, directly, uh, direct physical damage. And looking at our health pools, maybe with the exception of Ebon here, who's at 600, all of the others might be a one-shot, and if we clump up like this up here, I fear that that's probably going to be a death sentence for us. There is a second strategy involving kind of going around here. Very similar <coughs> strategy. You put up a globe of inv invulnerability up here. Let them just come and fight them here one by one, teleport them down if needed. Um, also effective, but has the same shortcomings if the worm... Uh, starts burrowing and coming up here, we're all going to die. And I don't want to lose this battle. So we're. Uh, I've taken a strategy that I've used uh, at the very beginning when playing, um, which is the one here at the stairs. You do have the high ground. And the good part about this strategy is you do have angles up all the way down to here and here. That's all high ground, mind you. So even if you're standing up here, Saiken, you would almost reach all of uh, these uh, levels. You can easily teleport uh, people to here or even to here if you don't want to fight uh, with them. So it'll take them a while to go back. Mind you, you could even teleport them up here, but I think that would be a bad idea. And the go good part about it is the worm can only hit one person at a time. So now it's time for us to... Oh yeah, I furthermore maybe some uh, sort of uh, word of advice how the strategy is going to work. I furthermore prepped all of the area here with water, some with oil, so that Alexander and co. are being slowed down. And the core idea now is going to be to buff up. And then initiate the combat by essentially leaping up here yeah, unfortunately our cooldowns are already down let's regain them and in the meantime I'll summon an incarnate
Good. Time for the incarnate to start hitting Alexander. Well, that was the worst hit ever. Are you serious? There we go. I figured you wouldn't be. Okay, so the incarnate um, did not work as a pulling technique. Let's try that again. This time we're taking an oil incarnate. Definitely don't want to go through the dialogue. The idea of this strategy is we're going to pull them and Ifan is essentially going to teleport one of uh, them up to us. There we go, finally. Okay, so you can see the Bishop uh, Bishop Alexander in, a, uh, in itself, easy peasy, uh, almost 2,000 on all of the relevant sets. So not even remotely close uh, to what his level 8 version would be looking like. So we have a really tough fight ahead of us. I'm going to react to that by... making sure that we are appropriately buffed. Good. Now, since everyone is in combat, let's make sure that we can properly act upon that. So we could teleport all the way up to here, which wouldn't be the worst idea. Let's try this, shall we? Could get a knight, we could get the gaze. The gaze is a dangerous foe. We might want to get Alexander himself. Could put him all the way up to here. I mean, not a bad idea. Yeah, let's take Alexander. And we can teleport him all the way up to here. I'm asking myself the question if there is still a better way to do that. See, I would um, probably teleport him up to here. So yeah, let's use this. Alexander moves up all the way up to here. We're joining the battle. Good. So far, so good. So, Losa begins to... You know what? Let her stand back for now. And let's I can do that. Beautiful. It's just in range. So... Are we already... Let me think. I guess we could already, like, contaminate everything, but that would be a bit too hasty. Let's instead hit him. But before we do so, we're going to haste ourselves. Speaking about being hasty. There we go. So Saiken is in combat. And we're going to use that momentum. You might uh, think I'm overdoing it, but please believe me. I remember the last fight to be... I already had a scaling monster sort of mod once and I remember the last fight to be extraordinarily difficult. Okay, so putting out 
putting a trap down here. Getting watery arrows and let's start unloading on him. That's good. Sibyl is ready. She gets fortification. She gets armor of frost. She gets a nice encouragement slap on the back. Good enough for now. Losa stays where she is and we can rejoin the combat. Okay, perfect. So, Incarnate's turn. Incarnate moves back without triggering the trap. And takes away 209 armor. That's exactly what I wanted to see. So Ifan will take some beating now, but he has proper defenses. It's a bit slowed. Nothing major. Cannot easily get out of that. The Magister Knight can't reach us. Unless he has Blitz Attack, but I don't think that he has. No, he's just slowed. The Ghast, however, could. His Chameleon Cloak will not help him. He'll eventually go through some oil. And next turn we're going to turn all of the oil into... Um, with contamination into acid. Once you take damage um, and your stealth, you are going to be revealed. So the Chameleon Cloak didn't do anything for him. In round number three, the Worm is going to show up. So until then we should have our stuff together. Good. It's Ethan's turn, like I mentioned before. I think we could do this here. Yeah, let's let's go. Ethan uh, deals some extra damage. We're going to make sure that we are not being uh, hit next turn. Perfect. Good. Now, time to pull the trigger. Everything should start... Oh, well, it's probably even burning. All right, so much for Necrofire. Gotta watch the rest here. Anyways, let's... Take care of our good friend Bishop Alexander, shall we? Nice little trap. That unfortunately missed, my bad. It's difficult to get clear line of sights. Oh, come on. <coughs> Half of the time is path interrupted. There we go. Pretty solid uh, damage. We're looking at further taking away his magical armor. There we go. It's gonna do the trick.
He's finally poisoned. And let's see. <coughs> I'm sorry. Don't know what's going on. Let's give him a shock, which will take away one of his action points. So he's now shocked, um, plus couldn't do much really. Continuing to harass him. Let's stand here, that's fine. I wish the Necrofire would have gone all the way down to here, which is probably a, the better idea. So we gotta get a contamination going somehow. Saiken so continues with letting him bleed fire. Time for us to continue hasting ourselves. And you know, I mean, we're in fire, uh, sending in fire, that's fine. Let's still try to use our skills, even though they are not uh, they are not um, affected by elemental affinity. Still going to be fine. Good. So Alexander will uh, act right at the beginning of next turn. Might as well delay until then. And we can take away his turn by simply putting him to sleep. We have crowd control. Oh, I almost forgot the entire fight so far. Went without Lose even doing something. Quick rebuff here, really. can come back to her in a second. Just making sure the build is fine. Good. So let's continue with uh, Sibyl. She can certainly hit him. There we go. Nice little poison explosion. That's two. <coughs> We're continuing our onslaught. That's three. I think we, she might even be able to kill him. There we go. All right, the fight continues, and there's the worm. The worm has taken an interesting position there because it's simply blocking everything in line of sight. Which isn't the bad, uh, the worst uh, part that could have happened. We're moving back in. Got a strong position here, by the way. Hitting everyone with a trap. There we go.
Hitting everyone with a fireball. There we go. Three further daggers, and how about we make the worm explode? There you go. Putting up some totems. And let's help <coughs> to keep everyone encouraged. Seville is in a similarly good position. I mean, this here is a triple hit. Might as well use it. There we go. Crits for 200. We already have taken out the magical resistance of the assassin. <coughs> the worm is almost done as well. Just need to angle the shots well. Second hit. Want to hit as many as possible. Damn, well, it's just millimeters. Uh, let me do something else. We're going to take elemental shots next turn. Okay, so that worked out well so far. Um, you know, I'm wondering. We would have grenades, but they really do not a lot of damage, at least not compared to the other damage that we're seeing. Hmm. I don't want to go in and fight against the worm. Um, even is strong, but the worm deals a lot of damage. And it would feel a little bit like throwing away his life. So although it's not the most damage... I still feel... This here is providing some damage, at least. Oh, you know what? We're playing it defensively. Just preparing for the next turn, really. We got wings, which we can use in order to reposition. There's a... Um, there's still the archer coming up here. Once he's reaching this area, we might want to fly away anyways. And let's encourage ourselves. See, and that's the problem. Damn, he hit all three of us. Look at that. Knockdown, insta-kill. Stupid. Stupid and yet overpowered at the same time. Perfect position. We <clears throat> we were we were at maximum health, yet I could not do anything against it. And I specifically wanted it to not happen <coughs> because I knew if they 
if they would be able to, uh, if the worm would be able to reach us, that, that would be a problem. Alright, we took away all of their magical armor, might as well continue harassing the assassin, which is almost dead. There we go, assassin down. The level up uh, regained some of our health, which isn't too bad. Can't teleport uh, the, the worm, unfortunately. But we could give the worm something else to do. Before we raise a potential target, let's make sure that we can take care of the worm. So first things first. Isabel's corpse still here? No, it isn't. There we go. Poisoned. And I think we would want to entangle it. Which this here is going to do. There we go, it's entangled. And now we're just walking away. Normally you want them to fight with a worm, if you're just staying out of trouble. Really nothing much happens. Problem currently is the worm has started to uh, fight against us, so we might as well need to take it out. As every so often, Saiken ends up pulling everyone, despite not needing to just to make it a little bit more difficult. This Magister Knight here does a valiant effort in coming forward trying to, ki uh, to kill this worm. Good, we're flying out. There we go. Can we hit the worm? No, we can't. But we can get closer. But it's going to cause some damage. So we're charging closer. Deals a bit of damage. And finally we can sleep the worm. Meaning it loses its next turn. Well, of course, unless Yemet here, with his 240 fucking hit points, decides to join the fray. Basically saying, you know what? Worm isn't that bad. Can easily get him down. No, Yemet, you can't. Please, trust me, you can't. But what we can do is, we might be able to, since he's already chilled, to... Shortly shoot a water arrow. And a freezing arrow. Making him chilled again. Fortunately in the necro fire it hadn't worked. Might as well continue with normal damage. Here we go. Fire trap. And let's poison him. Alright. Solid petrification. 
But we, I think we can remove petrification. Besides, just out of curiosity, could we? Hmm. I'm wondering, could we charm this guy? That would be absolutely fantastic if we could. I think we don't have a petrification removal up here. We would have had soul, soul made. Yep, but I don't have that memorized. Although there is a free slot. Damn, should have done that. You know, the worm doesn't act until next turn, so we might as well just delay for now and see how things uh, evolve. Losa can still um, charm it. It wouldn't be a bad idea to do that. All right, starting to hit the ghost. The ghost returns the favor. Oh, pretty decent hits. So in terms of dealing with all of those guys, let's make sure uh, what would deal the most damage. We can definitely deal with a uh, with a knight here. He's almost down. And there we go, knight is down. Problem is, uh, Ifan is still petrified for another round afterwards. So that's essentially a two round. Um, but, you know, we could uh, give him... Wait a second, we could give him a uh, Armor of Frost. Yeah, I should have done that with Saiken, my bad. Too streamlined on, or too much focused on killing. We're continuing to damage the the worm. Uh, we don't have another scroll of of. Uh, mm of armor frost question of the day is do we want to try to charm the worm or not i think we might give it a try i mean what's the worst that could happen yep he's immune to be charmed lesson learned right there let's take this dead seeker and exchange him for Ifan. Is petrification making you immune to be teleported? Taunted immunity to being teleported. Okay. Never mind then.
in which case Lowe's simply moves away to not be in range. Let's see what the worm is going to do. He should borrow and unborrow. He apparently continues to harass Seville. No clue why, but it starts getting a little bit annoying. She's knocked down. I mean, let's see what's the most realistic. Next tu in turn, we're going to conjure an incarnate. We can teleport the drill worm, not yet. Luckily, Seville was not killed. We don't have first aid on Lose, so she uh, Lose can't just get her up. Yeah, we're going to save that one ability point, uh, that one action point for next turn. I think Sibyl uh, herself is okay for now. Just need to get some more healing in. Yeah. 32. Okay, so that is one option. How do we deal with the worm? Is the question. This here should blind it. No, nope. it is immune to be to being blinded. Great. So I can haste himself for the next turn. And they, by the way, killed the incarnate, so we need to resummon one. I'm probably going for a fire incarnate. We are flying out of here, like literally over here should be fine. We can't sleep it either. <laughs> Let me think. I mean, we don't have first aid on him as well. We need to get Lose up, uh, Sibyl up somehow. So moving in, let's give him another target. So we're standing here, evading. Sibyl basically stood up and immediately got hit. Okay, good, but at least she survived. Sibyl can't be teleported. Let's put Lose's turn almost at the end. No, we can heal her. Matter of fact, can heal both of them.
Well, it healed everyone short of Seville. There we go. Much, much better. Summoning of the Incarnate needs to wait another turn. Sibylla is definitely back in business now. Saiken delays his turn because people need to move away from the worm in order to deal damage. We're going to have an issue with the Gaze here. Maybe not. <clears throat> Let's see. So I could move up to here. Then we're taking the murderous ghost, putting him right here. A bit of damage for both. And Ivan makes himself invisible that way. There's a lower chance that the worm will go into his direction and loses because the worm will try to maximize the number of targets he's hitting with his um, burrow up ability. <clears throat> so if we don't cluster up, that should be a problem. Those guys here are effectively currently out of the fight. Wasn't intending to uh, to exclude them, but I, ha I am not unhappy about this development. Moving an entire action point up here gives us potential high ground. Maybe, maybe not. Can't really get up here, which would be the high ground that I would need. Can't get there either. Oh, this here would be so good. All right, wait for it. This here might actually work. Is that far enough away? How could that not be far enough away to get out of combat? Well, sometimes you gotta flee then. We're taking the high ground. That might be a position where this nasty worm can't actually get to us. Wow, all of this here uh, is space where we would be revealed. Need to go along that route and get up here. We gotta try to not get into combat. Never mind, we can at least jump and move up all the way up to here. That should be possible. 
All right, Cycle and finally can start unloading. Here's a trap. And come on. Now nah, we I don't want to reposition because that'll mean I'm losing the fire uh, fiery ground. I need a better position. The tent is in the way. Could send over here, but that again would be clustering up. Could send over here, but that seems suicidal. Uh, could stand over here. Ah, uh, yep, uh, it seems to work better. There we go. Corpse explosion. Well, that would deal physical damage anyways, never mind. Alright, so... As I was saying beforehand, let's jump over here. all the way up here make sure we have an action point left over afterwards is this really not going to break combat I'm not getting it Well, good enough, I suppose. So, we got <laughs> both of the targets out of line of sight. Great. All right, moving over here. Not the most genius first, uh, first turn in our position, but I think we can hit both of them. That fight is escalating way more quickly than I would have thought. All right. Well, it is definitely escalating way more quickly than I would have thought. Murderous Gaze is murderously down. Now we got to deal with this guy there. Let's summon our incarnate and have some fiery fun, shall we? There we go. Bam, burn. I love it how Yimit still thinks he's contributing. And matter of fact, don't, don't go into melee. Oh my gosh, like, what, what are you thinking, dude? He completely thinks he's going to man mode this here. I got a surprise for you, buddy. You aren't. All right, Ifan. Delay because we might be able to sleep in. I still won't give up on the illusion that we can. Those guys here aren't doing anything.
One shot. Okay. We're getting there eventually. Two shots. Let's put in adrenaline. Three shots. Maybe we're not getting there. I don't know. All right, Ifan. <clears throat> we don't have magic damage with him, other than. Another grenade. Yep, every little bit of damage counts. Let's try to sleep him. Nope, he's immune to sleeping. Which means we're finally going to get as far away as possible. Poisoned, necrofired. <clears throat> See, that, exactly that happens, Yemet, if you're going into melee. That was an extremely stupid idea to begin with. Alright, Loza turns into a damage dealer. Let's get this bad boy down. Almost. Saiken mildly moves away and then finishes this guy. Mildly moves away and then finishes this guy. Alright, so I don't want to level up yet and we're not going to go for the loot. I want to continue the battle. Good, there we go. Ethan moves in, Lowe's moves in. Getting the rest of the crew. Good, moving over. Lowe's begins to buff Ethan. What the hell is going on, Ethan? Okay, strange. I can't move him. Oh, wait a second. Lowe's was mid uh, mid casting. Okay, that makes absolutely sense. Very good. So, let's buff up Ethan. And he is in combat. Good. <coughs> Los. Uh, Sibyl, rather. Moves up here.
<coughs> Good, Sibylla's in combat as well. Let's get Saiken up here. Buffing him and Saiken is joining the combat. Finally, blows herself. So, only two more enemies, and it shouldn't be too much of, a, of an issue. It's more a matter of I want to taste sweet, sweet victory, now that we're almost uh, there. I see a trap there. <clears throat> Time to hit both of them. And time to hit them again. There we go. Good. Contamination. Yes, please. We're unfortunately not standing on contaminated ground ourselves. Perfect. Lois is going to teleport herself up here. Let's create a little totem. And move up all the way to the edge. Okay, both of them almost lost their magical armor. Might as well. Slow them down. There we go. It's not going to entangle them, but it will further damage them. The metamorph needs to lose his remaining armor. And he's doing his dearest to reach that goal. Nice little tremor grenade there. I give him that. Alright, both of them need to be slowed.
Well, Ethan should delay for now. There we go. Solid hit. Can't fully hit this guy, so let's continue hitting the Metamorph. So we're down to 50 hit points. We're down to one hit point. Do we have anything that deals magical damage? Well, we don't. Except that our weapon is poisoned, which means it also deals magical damage. There we go. Run over here. And let's take a position over here. Great. Worked like a charm. A further totem. And a little bit of poisoning. There we go. Metamorph at this point is severely handicapped. His Heart of Steel doesn't provide any benefit. And we delay. And we delay. Seville takes the metamorph. And where do we want to drop it? I mean, downstairs would be the best, obviously. Sibyl begins to heal herself. Let's land right behind her. Small ambush, and then we're moving away. Hit and run. This here is exactly what I was looking for. Now she is entangled. And it's time to clean up another incarnate. And by the way, whilst we're cleaning up, I can already start a bit of a commentary about how the party worked out. When I intended to do the run, I wanted to provide kind of an overview about uh, various ways of uh, doing balanced parties. I think the builds overall uh, have been pretty successful. I would consider it uh, uh, widely a success. Let's shortly gather the loot and I'll review the builds um, as we go. So the reason why I would uh, con 
Yeah, yeah, blah, 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 blah. I managed to put she peers tell me. Which of the three? She cocks her head and stands at it. Believe it. Can we? Go on then. Show me what he taught you. Perfect. You really. I'm. Come then, we set sail. Your destiny awaits, etc. You'll have to ask Melody to I... you, darling. Yeah, ask her to wait. Thank you. That's what I was looking for because we don't want to go yet. So let me shortly collect the loot uh, whilst we're discussing <coughs> the builds in detail. <coughs> Apologies, I'm a little bit sick. So if I'm looking at the four builds that we had and the intent behind uh, each of them, uh, all of them by themselves are absolutely honor mode uh, solo run uh, material. So you can take any of the four builds and would probably have a somewhat reasonably easy time to build to beat normal honor mode um, difficulty. Looking at Ifan, I think at the very beginning he struggled a little bit to deal damage, so a lot of it boils down to him actually having a really strong weapon. At the end, his just breadth of uh, crowd control, not only magical crowd control in terms of chloroform, but only also his physical crowd control was definitely a, a contributor to an easier um, set of fights. I think the build is incredibly strong overall, and if you want to try a melee, melee build, I highly suggest that going for a dagger and a deck-based build is uh, probably an interesting alternative. We we certainly, and I've forgotten to do that in this run, I certainly could have reskilled him at some point and just showed you the two-hand uh, weapon um, strength version of uh, the melee character, pretty similar, uh, but less based on crowd control and more based on simply doing da damage, essentially using whirlwind. Anyways, that's a different story. So I'm happy with how the build turned out, but it had a bit of a starting um, problem. Lose, uh, um, all, overall, I am very impressed with uh, summoner builds. Summoning is such a versatile trait and despite the fact that you are not kind of the top damage dealer, the utility builds really shine in many of the cases, uh, repositionings, nether swaps, uh, teleportations, but also um, at the end the conjurations uh, made a huge difference and a great contribution in the actual battle. I'm a fan of uh, summoning builds, and although they are not scaling as well as other builds because they're crit damage, they are not relying on crit damage and multiples. <clears throat> by no means uh, they are bad, and there's even a build in mod from Larian Studios letting you have multiple summons at the same time. If you go down that route, splashing it, uh, splashing in necromancy, and uh, even having. Uh, the summoner is your main character with Ifan and his uh, uh, Soul Wolf would certainly benefit you. The Soul Wolf also um, benefits from caster level and summoning. So having Ifan in the role of a summoner uh, with a summoning mod is uh, considerably a super strong build. I um, think that that alone can uh, can easily walk you through an honor mode run. So builds built, very straightforward. I like rangers. I really was impressed again, even with how well she could keep up with uh, keep up with damage. If you are into crafting and you can make uh, the uh, the uh, arrow crafting work, there's a lot that you can get out of it. You've seen she's able to with the right arrows uh, deal. Uh, magical damage. So depending on the fight, you could either go down the route and make it an all magical damage or predominantly magical damage fight, which we've just done, or uh, go into the other direction and make it an all physical fight. Uh, straightforward build, very easy to play, uh, but the easy builds don't necessarily need to be bad builds. And finally, uh, Saiken, the Omni Mage, I personally am a big fan of uh, the build. Um, noticed again how strong the little splash in, in Necromancy is to just 
um, give him the option uh, to to provide some physical damage. Also, the utility function of necro uh, necromancy is uh, incredibly strong. If I would have built uh, the group again, I would probably make him a predominant necromancer. Necromancers start out pretty meh. Uh, because they don't have a lot of cooldowns at the beginning, but as the time progresses, uh, they become monstrously strong. Uh, probably one of the most imbalanced builds uh, there is. Uh, the mage build as such, specifically the fire mage build, was a lot of uh, fun to play. Uh, the damage was uh, incredibly high and he could keep up with uh, Sibyl. More AoE damage based, but like just his normal uh, damage with uh, fireballs and so on and the follow-up uh, burning afterwards was um, was incredible like he was able to dish out more burst damage than anyone else specifically due to the elemental affinity um, if you play the uh, your cards right and you essentially started with a contamination go through the whole line of um, of earth magic then use ignition and go through the whole line of fire magic and at some point if you're not necessarily having um, necro fire here you could even um, splice in a flash sacrifice then go into mosquitoes uh, mosquito swarm and the other nice abilities in necromancy and by that time quite frankly most of the fights were already gone i like this um, additional splash into into uh, utility functions uh, which was hel definitely helpful by the way i've just noticed we had poison cloud grenades here and poison flasks which yeah should have been on efun whatever now it doesn't matter um so yeah overall successful run i would uh, say let's take a short look at the loot that we've gotten and uh, from then on we're ending this run so we got ourselves Scoundrel Pyro uh, Head, which might be an upgrade to Scoundrel Necromancy, uh, uh, Scoundrel Geomancy, so yes, that's an upgrade right there. We... Did we get anything else? Can't believe we haven't gotten... Ah, right, here we go. That's where all of the loot went. Good, Sneaking Constitution. That's not a bad belt for anyone. Good, next up we got some gloves. Nice thievery gloves, by the way. They require strength, uh, though. So that's an option. And I know that Seville had really bad gloves. But she also doesn't have the strength to provide for it. Probably giving them two lows. And finally, the amulet. Finesse, Wits, Huntsman, and Summoning. That's pretty much... <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, this is pretty much a nice amulet for her. There we go. Good. This has been our run, guys. We conclude and say thank you as a party for your attention and for following the entire run. It's been a pleasure to go through Divinity Original since Definitive Edition. Simply a great game. If you look for a fantasy game, I highly, highly re recommend giving it a shot. And uh, do they have a, a wave animation? No, they don't. Okay, imagine that they would cheer you on. Thank you so much for watching. Leave a nice comment down below. And keep in mind, if you want to see more Divinity content, now is the time to, uh, to say that. Thanks and have a great day. Bye-bye.